Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. When we think of money, our first image is probably that of a stack of notes or a collection of coins that provide us with access to goods and services that we require. This vision isn't wrong, as physical or cash is the most, has long been the most prevalent and spontaneous demonstration of money in our societies. However, as we all know, this is an accurate reflection of one type of money. However, there are other less revealing and obvious types. While this presentation is titled The Continuous Evolution of Money, it is often our advantage to look back to developments before deciding on the optimum way forward. So to start, I would like to walk you through a, a short but rich story about how our money have evolved throughout history. Long before what money, what we call money, was invented, people were quite happy to grow, make, do stuff for one another. Individuals often exchange goods and services by trading them individually and directly. This type of exchange is called the barter system. For example, a farmer may exchange a pair of shoes, uh, sorry, a, pair, a, pair, uh, a bag of wheat, uh, wheat for a pair of shoe from a shoemaker. The bartering system is believed to have started with, in the Mesopotamian tribes 8,000 years ago. Uh, these ancient people used the bartering system to get, to get access to food, uh, weapons, and spices that they need. However, as you could imagine, this system is inefficient. As community grew, the time to find a suitable trading partner was high. In addition, the bartering system had many issues, one of which that the price, the price of one good might have many uh, equivalents. So for example, uh, a cow could be equal to 100 bags of wheat or five goats, for example. By realizing this inefficiencies in the system, people create, were incentivized to creating and inventing new forms of money. The usage of various uh, items, such as animal skins or stones, uh, historically, as uh, once a good, uh, once a uh, object was becoming a good, accepted way, more of money, people did not have to an immediate use for this. Still, will, were still willing to accept it as a method of payment. Although everyday objects such uh, were extremely practical forms of money, nevertheless they had disadvantages and issues like the inability to store them for a long time or accurately measure their, uh, measure their value or even to split the, them into smaller units. Therefore, people started to use precious metal such as gold and silver. Until hundred years, uh, several hundred years ago, these, these were actually the main method of payment. Yet, these metals were still quite heavy and it has their disadvantages when transfer, transferring bigger sums for larger merch, uh, purchases. As bank evolved in the 16th and 17th centuries, businessmen deposited their gold in banks and in return receives a, a, a statement or a receipt indicating how much they have deposited. As a result, the paper money or fiat money as we know it was invented as a, as a method of exchange or a medium of exchange. Although these new formats of money addressed the issues of commodity money, there are still some issues when it comes to dealing with large purchases where another major innovations in payment systems came in the early 20th century with the increasing usage of cards. Today, the boundaries of electronic fund transfer has expanded to include electronic money, which is digital cash that we may use to buy goods and services, whether you're using your card or mobile. Looking at what I have shared with you today, money can mean many things and may, may mean many different uh, things in, in different connotations. On the one hand, when people say that a person has a lot of money, they usually mean that they ha this person has wealth. However, on the other hand, econ to economists, money has a particular meaning when they define it as anything that is generally accepted for payment for goods and services or the repayment of debt. However, to define money as merely currency would be too narrow for economists. No matter money, no matter whether money is gold, paper, stones, economists, which they still have some value in our society, tell us as money has three primary functions or characteristics. First is as a medium of exchange. If you are a teacher or accountant, you are paid for money for your services. Then you can use that money to buy goods. 
you essentially exchange your teaching services for food, clothing, and rent. So money is the medium which exchange takes place. Without a medium of exchange, we would be still living in a barter system. This means that you could specialize in teaching or in accounting services without having to worry to grow or make the services or products that you may require. Furthermore, by specializing, people and societies became far more productive than they would be if they had to produce or make the goods and services they consume themselves. The second uh, element is a unit of account. Using a token as a medium of exchange provides another benefit instead of having to quote the price of one item in terms of the sing in terms of a single item in terms of many other items, for example, exchanging two bags of salt uh, in exchange for chicken or three chickens for an iPhone, this function of money gives households and firms the unit of account to, uh, as a way to measuring economic value. For instance, in the Saudi economy, all goods and services has a price in terms of Saudi real. The third element is a store of value. A store of value in any commodity or asset would typically retain purchasing power in the future while taking into account inflation. In the monetary system, money is considered as a store of value where it can be used to save and allocate capital over time. This means anyone accepting money today expect that anybody, everybody else will accept it tomorrow with no surprises in its intrinsic or market value. These three characteristics or functions of money seems to be the essential prerequisites to the ongoing definition of money. Without satisfying these core three features, it is not possible to guarantee or satisfy the integrity of payments. Now hold on this thought for a moment and I will come back to it. Here I would like to take and pause and take a highlight of some of the history in our region. During the early days of Islam, two currencies were widely used and accepted by merchants in the Arabian Peninsula. The dinar, which was a gold currency unit of account from the Byzantine Empire, and the dirham, which was minted in silver in the Persian Empire before Islam. In the year 690, uh, the first Khalifa of the Khalifa Abd al-Malik bin Marwan began replacing these currencies with the first Islamic Arabic dinar introduced with Arabic scripture. Moving forward to the Arabian Peninsula in the 20th century, when King Abd al-Aziz took over Riyadh in 1902, various foreign gold and silver and bronze currencies were commonly used regardless of any of these currencies belong to an existing country or not. At that time, people in the region considered the Australian teller as the one of the most important currencies, while <coughs> where they locally we called them a real francy or the French real. King Abdul Aziz worked hard to find a solution to control the monetary complication in the early days of modern Saudi Arabia. In 1927, King Abdul Aziz took an action seen by, by as the most important step in the monetary reform, creating the, first, the very first silver real and put it into circulation as the principal currency to the state of Saudi Arabia. In 1953, the newly established, uh, the newly established Saudi Arabian Monetary uh, Authority started issuing, uh, started issuing Hajj pilgrims notes uh, uh, for 10 riyals denomination. These resembled banknotes as we know them today. They were initially intended for use by pilgrims who exchanged foreign currency uh, uh, to make their journey uh, uh, more uh, practical to Saudi. However, they became widely accepted and, uh, and, and largely accepted for payments within the kingdom. So consequently, in 19, so consequently, during the days of King uh, Saud bin Abdul Aziz, uh, Sama began issuing regular banknotes in 1961. Moving forward to modern days, you can see that digital revolution is transforming our social relationship, our consumptions, our habits, and, and our very culture. As our daily lives go to a large extent to go digital, so, how, so have our payment channels, instruments, and patterns from relying on payments using gold and silver and coins to online instant and contactless payment. Not so long ago, cash was the only way to make immediate payments. However, today, the use of electronic payments around the world has increased significantly. Last week, for example, Sama has announced that the share of electronic payments in the retail space has exceeded 57% of all transactions happened in the retail space in last year, 
Moreover, 35% of all transactions and payments in Saudi Arabia conducted just year, last year was using, using smartphone and mobiles. As cash now is no longer the most prevalent used method of payment in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. We are now in an era where technology innovations leading the digital transformation in global payment. While the new technology and the digital era of money allows us to address the traditional frictions of some of the one monetary system, not, let's not forget that at the center of money is the trust between the buyer and the seller. And we shall explore this more shortly. Change does not stop. The, in fact, further multidimensional changes are progressing at an exceptional speed. There are three underlying global trends have been driving change in payment system design. Speed, cost, and globalization. Emerging technologies such as blockchain combined with the growing needs for faster, cheaper transactions sparked the crypto revolution, in, uh, 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 as outlined including, including crypto assets. The purpose of these emerging technological solutions is primarily to reduce the frictions in the existing payment systems. The frictions arise usually from the, from the process of, of the intermediaries. Blockchain can provide the, for the capacity for faster payment execution at lower cost with greater transparency for users. Using the broad architecture type and over the last couple of the last decades specifically, a great number of private sector issued crypto assets has emerged in many forms and presented an expanding set of use cases, including payments. But are these crypto assets fundamentally money? Let us take a closer look against the three economic roles that associated with money that we mentioned previously. Do these crypto assets offer a sufficient stability to be considered as a reasonable store of value? Are their valuations typically stable enough to facilitate valuation and for goods and services to be considered as a unit of account. And thirdly, and more importantly, is it accepted? Is the acceptance ecosystem wide enough or the mutual trust network wide enough so that it could be <coughs> considered as a medium of exchange? I believe that the trust element of money which is drawn by the guarantee to honor undertaking by a credible entity that is the most important feature. Such trust is not built in a day. It will require a credible and independent institution that, have that had, uh, would, st would stand the test of time, both the good and the bad. So what potential solution that could perform these three essential functions grounded by the vital element of trust while combating the digitalized, secure, and, in and instant frictionless transfer of value? It can be reasonably argued that some forms of these crypto assets, such as stablecoin, could begin to approximate these expected attributes of money, but never fully. A stablecoin will always seek some connected value relationship or pegging to a reserve asset, a reserve currency, or a, a commodity, stabilizing it as a store of value and a unit of account. Perhaps if the platform owner is big enough, the, pl the, the platform members or users are engaged and, and are engaged in both sides of the transaction in sufficient number, the stablecoin could introduce this element of trust. Sorry. But however, this week's event in the metaverse suggests that even in the case of a large scale private sector stablecoin like Facebook's DM, potentially offering many of the overt characteristics of, of money, long-term sustainability can still be difficult. Another emerging solution that is increasingly studied and implemented by central banks globally is the introduction of a central bank digital currency, or CDBC. What CDBC could do is to continue the independent integrity and trust sources of fiat money while, ex while extending its efficiency throughout through digital means by leveraging on the desired capabilities of emerging technologies such as DLT to deliver new improved versions of central bank currency. It is perhaps not surprising that more than 90 countries around the world are exper exploring and experimenting with CDBC. In a nutshell, CDBC is a central bank issued money in a digitalized virtual form seeking to provide the trusted, secure, independent, and more importantly, open to all platforms. Of course, there is still much to be considered, explored, and tested carefully before a central bank decide to issue a CDBC. 
And this next evolution of money continues to take place in many dynamic forms and shapes. We're excited that we are strategically positioned for this new era. SAMA is pursuing this, its central bank in pursuit its, in, in its central bank mandate and public policy objective will, cons will constantly assess and adopt technological, economical, and social cultural changes in the kingdom and internationally. I see before me the kingdom's young tech-savvy generation, and I really am extremely optimistic about the future of our financial sector. The combined promise of strong local talent and financial technology innovations could bring about important structural shifts in our financial sector. I hope my presentation has sparked your imagination to what the future truly holds. I am confident that the kingdom will remain in a constant state of readiness to embrace productive technological innovations that, we will, ultim that will ultimately improve the well-being of all segments in our society. At the end, I encourage you that you all continue, this sen to, continue to have this sense of uh, possibilities and curiosity. Thank you.